It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Many thanks for joining us and being part of the show this morning. Uh, first conversation right here, as the issue of security. As we battle against insecurity, the federal government has enmarked 1.53 trillion naira to prosecute the ongoing anti-insurgency fight in the country. This was contained in the 20.51 trillion naira 2023 budget proposal presented to the National Assembly by President Mohammed Buhari on Friday, the 7th of October. Now, findings indicate that out of this 1.53 Three five trillion naira, the Ministry of Defence and Armed Forces have been allocated over 1.248 trillion naira to fight Boko Haram, bandits, and other anti-insurgency wars in the 2023 appropriation bill. Personnel expenditure will gulp over 1 trillion naira, overhead costs 90.961 billion naira, and capital expenditure. 156.294 billion. In recent years, Nigeria has increased its military spending and defense budget to enhance its military power and further improve security. According to the World Bank, in 2016, Nigeria approved a defense budget of $1.72 billion. The budget for the following year was $1.62 billion, which showed a 5.92% decline. In 2018, the military spending budget was $2.04 billion, a 26.02% increase over the previous year's figure. However, this decline by 8.95% in 2019, when the military budget stood at $1.86 billion, but it increased to $2.4 billion in 2020. And the country increases military spending by a massive 56% in 2021 to reach $4.5 billion. The, uh, it also moved from 2016, in 2016 to 2022, where Nigeria spent over 19.9 billion in total on security alone. Nigeria has toppled the list of countries in sub Saharan Africa with the highest defense spending at 5.8 billion dollars in the whole of Africa. On the other hand, Algeria has $9.7 billion spent for military purchases. Morocco followed after Niger with $5.4 billion. And overall, North Africa was the region allocating the largest budget to national defense on the continent. According to data published by Statistia in April 2022, I mean, these are the statistics. But this morning, uh, we have uh, an expert who joins the conversation, Dixon Osaje who's a criminologist and global security analyst. Dixon, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good. I'd like to share your thoughts. I mean, on the recent proposed budget for, you know, defense and security. All right, thank you very much. Good morning, the federal government has to to uh, the Ministry of Defense. And uh, one thing I could say, uh, we are not to the Nigerian state. Uh, first of all, uh, two weeks ago, we had, they don't have funds to take out our, to take our students back to school. But right now, I'm paying students of Naira going to the school. I don't have an issue with that. But the only problem I have is that how do we get our return to security investment? Which is very, very important. These trillions of naira needs to bring Nigeria to a state of peace. We need to, so we need to start moving around without being intimidated, without being coerced by these unnecessary human beings that are taking the territory and the existence of Nigeria for granted. It is a no no for us to have a mission of the 200 million people in the Nigerian army, the Air Force, the Navy, and over the same security agency. And we are still suffering multi-dimensional security threats. So the funds will be allocated to appropriate quarters. But what about accountability? We are not talking about accountability in our own part of this world. Every given nation, the military must give account of their expenditure. 
Um, how do you spend this money? Osage, how many uh, soldiers? I'd like to bring you back again. And that's because we had poor communication. I mean, when you started with your thoughts, it was almost impossible to hear you. But uh, so let's, let's start off again. My question is your thoughts on the recent budget or budget proposal for 2023 by the federal hmm. government. Hey, we are, we, are, we are very rich. And uh, a while ago, we, we made to understand that we are broke, that we cannot take back our students. We cannot take our students back to school. That is the answer strike. That was what was what came to my mind. However, uh, I'm, not, I'm not bothered about this front that is going to the defense. But my own worry here is the return of security investment. In every given nation, when a country or a government deploy such kind of funds, the government in, in return is expected to have security return of investment. That is return on security investment, which simply means that you and I can move around freely without being intimidated or being coerced by these criminal elements. That means we can be able to move, we can be able to travel by road, air, and sea without being intimidated. So now, looking at these funds, that tells you that we don't have issues from the strategic from the strategic center of gravity. The problem we're having is operationality and tactics. That is why we are still suffering from the state of insecurity today. Now, another problem we also have is accountability. How do we account for these funds? We, we, we are the uh, uh, people in charge to ensure that these funds are not being misappropriated uh, because uh, security is becoming a, insecurity is becoming a business in Nigeria. There are some people that don't want these security issues to end because of this uh, magnanimous funds that the federal government are releasing. So if we have an effective uh, accountability, I tell you for free that uh, nobody will come to the Nigerian space and begin to divert funds. But I wish the military were, and I want to encourage them to carry out uh, an effective uh, counterinsurgency and ensure they bring Nigeria back to a state of peace. Because it stands... We are in a mess situation, security-wise. Well, um, so I understand the fact that it's important that we pay attention to what the returns will be. It's more like you are investing a certain amount and it's expected that you should have an outcome. And that's what we should be looking at. We'll get to that, you know, in no time. But let's also look at the fact that in all of this, if we're saying that uh, 20 point let's call it 20 trillion naira. that's what we're budgeting for. The, 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 the government is also planning to borrow 8.8 .8 trillion naira to fund the 2023 budget. The question here is, where do we even get all of these funds? It's a lot. And so uh, we're going to be borrowing, right? Uh, because we don't have. So do you think that this is even uh, a, a rational thing to do? Do you think that this even makes any sense? How we, do we even well, solve this uh, when we're going to be borrowing at the end of the day and we're looking at $1.35 trillion? Well, uh, I will answer your questions uh, from two perspectives. Uh, the first point is, if we are going to borrow these funds from external forces and these funds will mitigate the high speed of insecurity in Nigeria and ensure that our soldiers are protected, our military are protected, the society is protected, our territorial space is protected, our water side and waterways are protected, then I will accept or agree with the government to borrow. But if we are to borrow these funds and we don't have return on security investment, that is to say, on the other hand, we cannot move freely in Nigeria, we cannot travel freely in Nigeria, and our soldiers are being killed like chickens, our police officers are being killed like chickens by these criminal elements, what is the essence of borrowing? Because the whole essence of borrowing is to meet your demand, is to meet uh, your expectations. So I don't think we need to borrow to bring Nigeria to a state of peace if we have an effective accountability system. All this why we have been spending trillions of naira. All this why we have been spending billions of naira. What is the result? Today, Nigeria is the capital, uh, is, is the poverty capital of the world. Today, Nigeria is the second or third most terrorized nation in the world, a country of over 200 million people, sixth largest nation in the world. I don't think we are doing things right. I just believe 
from my own position that our political class from 2009, sorry, 1999, till date, they have saved this country. I say that with all sense of humility, with all sense of accountability, because we cannot have leaders that are not patriotic. We cannot have leaders that do not think about the well-being of Nigerians, about the well-being of you and I, and all they think is corruption, all they think is embezzlement, all they think is to move our funds to develop other nations. That is why we have arrived at this stage. Two days ago, we see uh, the, uh, a vessel that was bombarded that comes to our creek to, you know, divert our national, natural resources. This is no no. So for me, I think that we shouldn't borrow to put things right. Let us manage what we have if we know our military cannot resolve this state of insecurity because this government promised us that by December 2022, the high state of insecurity will be reduced to as low as reasonably acceptable. That's a stance. Our policemen are being killed every day. Our soldiers are being killed every day. And I'm not seeing results of our 2021 budget. So, I mean, so it brings us back to that 2021 because I was really going to ask that, you know, uh, it feels like the security situation has worsened uh, despite the fact that in seven years plus counting, we have spent about eight trillion naira in terms of defense. And that has not improved. So my question is why? There's a school of thought that believe that if we improve, you know, uh, spending on in terms of our budget on security and defense, it will translate into improvement of security and lives and properties internally and externally. And we see that apart from Nigeria, Africa as a continent. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, uh, huge budgets, budgeting, however. But that hasn't really translated into any tangible result. So my question is why? Okay, if you ask me why, I will refer you to Abuja. That is the central strategic center of gravity. But as an analyst, let me just answer your question because, uh, yeah, you know, we, we, are, we play with insecurity here in Nigeria. Uh, we play a lot with insecurity. Like a few years ago when we were expecting the Tucano jets, you know, everybody were bouncing, you know, we're all happy that once this Tucano jet arrives, I'll be able to trek from here to some bizarre forest without being uh, harassed or intimidated by those criminals. Uh, and at, at the stand, I don't even know where those uh, two kind of jets are deployed, you know. So my position is this. We need to understand something very clearly in this country. And that is why if anything happens in this great nation, I personally have said it on many fora, I will hold the military accountable. There is no giving nation that succeeds without the capability, efficiency and capability of its military. The military is supposed to hold the territorial integrity of this great nation. They need to take themselves or take a departure from politicians. They need to fight a divorce between themselves and politicians. I don't see a reason why we have a country where we have an effective military and still yet terrorist insurgents on al Qaeda are taking over territories, are taking over our lands. Where are our two canals where these Okadas are taking over our lands? Where are our my military equipment where these when these Okadas are taking over our territory? So for me, budget, budget allocation is not the problem. The problem here is accountability and deployment of those funds. Now, these funds, we're talking about how much or how well are we taking care of our soldiers? Because in the battlefield, you don't only have the weapons. That's what we call the shell acronym. We have the software. You use software in the battle. You use hardware in battle. And you also use the... Uh, the, the man, the man where, you know, the life where, which happens to be the soldiers, the officers. How are we taking care of our military? How are we taking care of our soldiers? Those are our soldiers that have been drafted to the battlefield. What are they being paid monthly? What are their monthly allowance? We are not talking about uh, motivations. Even though the military tried to tell us that they are motivating them. I can tell you for free that our military are not doing well in the area of motivations. And that is the truth. So we need to start looking at a, 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 a lot of things because Counterinsurgency is not just a one-way traffic. It's a multi-dimensional approach. We need to start looking at uh, uh, the political strategy. We need to start looking at economic strategy. We need to start looking at employment strategy. We need to also start looking at tactical strategy. Because one of the problems I have highlighted in this operation 
in our own from military perspective is the operational and tactical strategy. Come 2023, the Nigerian military needs to carry out a cover analysis against this enemy and ensure that the operational and tra tactical strategy uh, is, is well addressed. If you don't address your operational strategy, you don't address your tactical strategy, the enemy will hit you so hard that you will not believe. So we must stop this friendly match we are playing with these enemies and bring back the glory of Nigeria. Okay, so, um, so, so do you think that um, in all of this, uh, some persons would say that, you know, the issue that we're faced with at the time, security concerns are internal issues. I mean, with the fact that we have terrorists and kidnapping and banditry, it's more like a cocktail, a combination of what had happened and it, it feels like it's exploding, right? So um, that we should pay attention to the root causes. We should pay attention to... Uh, internal issues, if we pay attention to internal issues, it would take care of uh, some of the security challenges that we're faced with. So my question to you now is, do, do you think that we need to pay attention of, you know, some internal issues, some of which you have addressed, the issue of, you know, structural um, uh, conflict, I mean, structural issues, that will, you know, let her take care of, you know, the uh, mega issues at the end of the day? Well, I, I think before you uh, put the question to me, you know the question, the answer, you know the answer very well. It's a capital yes. Uh, you know, uh, Nigeria is a country at war as it says, I, I guess it says. Uh, and we're suffering from internal war situation. Uh, we are not suffering from external aggression. We are suffering from internal aggression. So, like you rightly said, uh, the root cause analysis, uh, that is very important because that's what we classify as the causative factors. Uh, because if you go to the hospital today, uh, you know, this doctors will start touching your stomach, touching your ears, trying to know where you are reacting to pains or where you are feeling okay or well. Uh, that's an assessment of your whole body system. It's just like military operations, you know. You need to carry out a, a vulnerability and a, a, a risk a, a analysis of what is happening in Nigeria. Uh, we want to talk about the causative factors. Well, I, I will not tell you it's commenced, it started in uh, 2009 or uh, 1999. Uh, when you go into history or uh, an effective study, uh, the history of insecurity started after the Nigerian Civil War. Uh, the Nigerian government after then were so interested, you know, in bringing Nigeria to a state of peace, in bringing Nigeria uh, as a one nation. They forgot the disarmament components of the uh, pre uh, post-1967 uh, civil war. And what they did was to start bringing back Nigeria. They didn't carry out a disarmament program, and that is where we have uh, small arms and ammunition going into the hands of the bad guys. And that is where the likes of great celebrity arm robbers like Shola and Co. and Nini came to torment the Nigerian state. Now, coming back to 1999, when the... Uh, uh, when we go... When we, uh, you know, handed uh, over the military leadership to democracy. Uh, we have respected the government as a then, you know, to carry out a 20, 30 years security plan, you know, but we didn't do that. We, you know, each government come with their own plan. What we must understand uh, as a nation is that it's not all about political system. It's not all about political party. The political party is a game of two faces. You either win or you lose. When you get into power, it has to be the Nigerian party, the Nigerian state. And that's why we need to start having our leaders having a, a you know a 10, 20 year security plan to ensure that uh, we do not uh, you know hand over insecurity to our children are born. Now, looking at the causative factors from the uh, terrorism point of view, what was the emergence of Boko Haram and the capture of Chibok in 2014 that uh, uh, gave Boko Haram uh, you know uh, publicity globally? You know, uh, in 2009 when this incident transpired, I'm trying to address. Uh, the causative factors. When this incident transpired in 2009, the Nigerian government were so swift to protect the military. Uh, they are thought that the military would go there and clean and, uh, you know, eliminate these guys and bring Nigeria to a state of peace. No! When it comes to security, the military is the last resource. That is to tell you that we should have protected the Nigerian police at the early stage. Who, we know very well that the Nigerian police are solely responsible for internal security, uh, but if it exceeds the capability of the Nigerian police, that is where we bring in the military. As it stands, we need to start building confidence in our Nigerian police. We need to start building confidence on our internal security factors 
before we start bringing in the military. Because here in Nigeria, for so long, we have abused our military. In any given situation, rioting, you project the military. Somebody is fighting at the local market, you project the military. Somebody has a deck fall down from Ted Milan Bridge, you project the military. That is an operational error. We well, need to start uh, and, but, but I'd like to find out from you. I, I mean, just quickly as we, uh, you know, coast the conversation down. Uh, with all of this uh, allocation and, and, you know, budgets has been made over time. We know that we spend a lot in terms of, you know, defense and security. Does that not cater for the police? So how come the police is, uh, you know, seem to be le lagging behind? Well, uh, uh, there's no nation that will have to, uh, you know, abandon their policy system. You know, uh, the police is uh, the bedrock of every, of, of every state, poli uh, policing-wise, security-wise. So uh, I think uh, the budget is also, also covers uh, the Nigerian police. I've not sat down to read the budget holistically because uh, what's the need to sit down and start reading budget that uh, you will not see uh, the results in 20, at the end of 2023. But God forbid, I, I believe uh, 2023 is coming, election is coming. Uh, the new leaders should start looking at the Nigerian states. They should start looking at unifying Nigeria. They should start looking at uh, so, so, um, taking um, over um, our I territorial mean, space. So, I mean, I'm just saying that. Are you saying that, you know, the budgetary allocation over time for security and defense does not uh, cover or does not encapsulate the police as an army? It does, it does. When we, when we talk about defense... Defense is not the Army, Navy, and Air Force. Defense is bringing together all the security components of the Nigerian state, both uh, forces and non-forces. So that is what the defense covers. So uh, it's important for you to allocate funds to the defense. And but the reason why you're seeing, talk, you're seeing that of the Nigerian Army, Navy, and Air Force is simply because they are the first three line of defense of the Nigerian state. And that is why most times you see the budget of this military, uh, you know, being shared uh, on, on the internet. So another issue is talking about the uh, police. We need to. That's a very good question. We also start need to start looking at uh, effective policing and also effective budgeting uh, to the policing system of Nigeria. So if we have that covered as well, I think uh, it's going to be of a help to the Nigerian state because uh, this there is a time when you go to any police station, you as a citizen, you are going to fund your case. Oh. So how do we take Nigeria away from this menace? We what have a lot to deal with. We need to go now. Thank you so much, uh, Dixon Osaji, for being part of the show. We appreciate uh, your thoughts. Oh, well, uh, he's a global security expert analyst right there. And he's, he's talked about the fact that the issue with, you know, uh, our security system is not about, you know, the budget and the continuous spending on uh, defense and security has not yielded any desired result. And so uh, accountability and implementation is what needs to be paid attention to. And that's it this morning. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at a second conversation. Please stay with us. <laughs>